Good morning, everyone. Monday morning, August 26th, 2024. I am a real progressive. It's really sick how the uh, the squad took over the the progressive label, and now Republicans are talking about progressives as being communists. Like, you know, it's just somebody for progress is for high technology, for space exploration, for nuclear power and fusion energy, for high speed rail for better jobs, high-tech jobs, um, you know, come on, not this idiot lunacy about, oh, which gender am I today, anyway, I was a Democrat all my life, I was part of the Lenin LaRouche organization back in the 80s and the 90s, so I got to experience a lot of this garbage from the Democratic Party back in the 90s when I was a, when I was a candidate for the Los Angeles Central Committee for the Democratic Party, and I got elected. And right at that time was when there was a big debate about NAFTA. And of course, Joe Biden was pushing NAFTA. Bill Clinton and the Democratic Party were pushing NAFTA as this wonderful thing, and we were against it because you, you, we knew exactly what was going to happen, and it did happen exactly the way we said it would. This was nothing more than a transfer of wealth to the Wall Street bankers and the, the CEOs of the major corporations by allowing them to move factories into Mexico, where at that time, the labor rates were 57 cents an hour, okay, in the Maquiadora area along the border. And so I, I used to go down to Mexico all the time. I was installing equipment down there, selling green equipment. And the, the day that NAFTA passed was the day that I never went again because what happened was Citibank, which was in control of the currency values at that time, had devaluated the Mexican peso, which was at three, do, uh, three pesos to the dollar at that time, and raised it, devalued the currency down to seven pesos to the dollar, which basically doubled the cost of anything coming in from the United States to Mexico. But what it did was it cut in half imports from Mexico. And that was the whole plan all along, to maximize profits for the CEOs and the stockholders and screw the workers. They had massive layoffs. Every, you know, the auto industry fell apart, steel industry fell apart, you name it. The industries in the United States with the high paying jobs fell apart. <coughs> and recently I did go back to Mexico for a couple of things, and I was installing some equipment down at a plant in um, the Kiodoras down there, Tijuana, a, a printing plant owned by Samsung. They were printing all their boxes and all their advertisements for Samsung products, uh, mostly telephones. They were printing all of that down there, okay? And the labor rates of the workers you know, the, just the, the general labor down there was $5 a day. And they would laugh about it. The owners would make jokes about it. How uh, one of the jokes going around was that if a Mexican wanted to buy a pair of jeans, they would have to take out a loan. You know, it, it's, it's just this sickness. The sickness. And you had Joe Biden was one of the major pushers of this, of this treaty. Joe Biden has always been a scumbag. He's the worst. He pushed all of the wars. He was corrupt. He even said that when he first was trying to get elected, he went to all the, the big money donors and tried to uh, prostitute himself. And they said, come back when you get a little older. I don't know if you remember that speech. But the... The Biden crime family, the Republicans just came out a report, you know, proving 
but the Biden family were in a pay-for-play scheme influence peddling. They made $28 million, the whole family, with a money laundering scheme and with many uh, shell companies. Unfortunately, this report could have come out two years ago when we had a chance where we could actually have done something like impeach this scumbag. But of course, too little, too late. Anyway, this, this the situation with RFK joining forces with Trump, I think it's an amazing idea because I actually had considered voting for RFK because he was in alignment with most he was the most aligned with the things that I am interested in and want to see happen in this country. Anti-war, freedom of speech. But one of the big problems I have with him, well, two big problems, is that he is a backer of the Green New Deal and global warming. He thinks global warming, you know, this whole existential threat bullshit. And then he's a staunch ally of Israel, the country that is committing ethnic cleansing and genocide against the Palestinians. They have been doing that for decades. The problem is, Trump is against global warming hoax. I mean, he's he stated that. He got us out of the uh, Paris Accords. Uh, but he's still a staunch uh, supporter of Israel. So, now that they have joined forces, I mean, I don't have any problem voting for Trump. The Democratic Party are a bunch of scumbags. They are anti-First uh, Amendment. You can see what they have done. You know what the FBI and the CIA did with Twitter and Facebook and Google. It's perfectly clear that they were in a, a, uh, a censorship operation over COVID and Trump, man, demonizing Trump at every turn, creating this atmosphere where anybody that's a, an idiot will believe this garbage. I mean, you talk to somebody, oh, Trump's an existential threat, he's this and that, and when you ask them exactly what it is that makes him an existential threat, they say, well, he's a liar, you know, grabs women by the purse, etc. But it's nothing of substance. And the Democratic Party right now, their whole platform is that Donald Trump is evil and an existential threat. And they'll do anything. They're going to rig the, They're going to try to rig the election again. They're going to have another assassination attempt. They will stop at nothing because they are controlled by the deep state, who are the towel boys for the oligarchy, which are the super elite rich this country and the WEF, the people that are running that, these, these globalist psychopaths that want to run the world with a one world government, one world army, and will basically take away everything. And what they want is a feudalist state. That's what they want is a feudalist system. And the Democratic Party is catering to that. And these fools that are going along with this garbage. Oh my God, it's amazing how stupid these people are. Trump is not perfect, and RFK is definitely not perfect, but they're a hell of a lot better than Camel Toe Harris. I mean, oh my God, you know, I just, it's just, it's just hard to imagine how stupid a group of people can be. It's really sad, it's very sad, in fact. So anyway, I gotta go. I'm in Wyoming right now, cross-country driving on a truck with a bunch of equipment. So I gotta go, subscribe. I, I'm putting stuff on YouTube still, but I don't expect anything to happen. I'm uh, posting everything on X and Rumble right now. So subscribe and like the videos. I'm not gonna tell you a lie. I am going to tell you exactly the way it is, the way I see it from my sources and my knowledge of history. All right, take care everyone. Have a great day.